Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you to our witnesses for joining us today. I appreciate you uh, coming out here. In, in Colorado, we are and have been facing historic uh, drought and wildfire uh, crisis, um, crises, and instead of allowing us to solve these issues through developing critical water storage, uh, the water supply projects, or actively managing our forests, which is something I'm very passionate about, especially in, in Colorado, where we have just so much nat uh, national forest lands. Uh, Democrats want to blame climate change, and they delay these critical projects indefinitely. Uh, the current permitting process under NEPA is unworkable, and I, I'm proud to support Chairman Westerman's much-needed reforms uh, to this very broken process. It's something that I encounter struggles and difficulties with on a regular basis uh, throughout uh, Western Colorado and, and the Western United States, even. Uh, Mr. Mr. Pugh, you mentioned that current NEPA regulations trigger litigation that burdens smaller rural communities, many of which I represent in Colorado. And uh, meanwhile, we have larger, more resourced communities uh, that may be able to afford sufficient legal representation. So could you just expand upon how frivolous uh, these lawsuits, uh, the, these frivolous lawsuits can slow down, add costs, or even block important water and infrastructure projects? Uh, certainly. Uh, as I stated before, uh, as soon as you add NEPA into the process, you're looking at at least a 25% gain on how much your project is going to cost. Uh, a lot of our rural uh, and smaller communities uh, simply don't have the resources to be able to fund that additional 25% on top of their projects. Uh, and in most cases, uh, they do not have the expertise on staff, so we wind up immediately having to go outside and hire outside help. Yes, and, and so some seemingly simple projects uh, may even be intimidating uh, for small tribal and, and rural communities that are, are concerned about going through NEPA uh, to even begin that process. And, and with this, um, when you state th uh, the federal funds that are introduced and um, at least the 25% increase that you just mentioned in, in a project budget, um, would you just expand a little bit more on how that does impact those rural communities, uh, our, our tribes, and, and just smaller areas? Uh, Again, the, the additional 25% just right off the top adding to the right. cost. Uh, and also for us, uh, whenever we would go into the NEPA process, our contracts with our outside consulting engineers and environmental people uh, were open-ended because we could not adequately describe how long the project was going to take, nor could we adequately describe the entire scope of services that would be required. Yes, yes, and, and we've experienced this in Colorado uh, with uh, Wolf Creek Reservoir uh, up north in, in the northwest. Uh, there, it was about a decade just going through that NEPA process before it was ever uh, permitting was ever approved. Uh, we have funding to begin that, but there's there's still more processes um, that need to take place in that. So I, I don't even think five million dollars is a drop in the bucket. Um, but, you know, right. at least we're making progress. So to eliminate some of those um, burdensome regulations and the frivolous lawsuits, I think, would be extremely beneficial. Uh, now, um, Mr. Uh, Jenkins, you stated that the current NEPA landscape of years-long un unconstrained reviews followed by extended litigation makes it difficult for your co-ops to conduct the necessary basic maintenance and vegetation management operations in a, in a timely fashion. Would you agree that the current regulatory framework increases the risk um, uh, increases the risk of adverse events like wildfires? Yes, I would. Yes. It, yeah. Well, in, in Colorado, you know, we're, we're coming off some of the worst wildfires uh, seasons in history, and it certainly doesn't seem to help uh, that it takes the Forest Service an average of 3.6 years uh, to begin mechanical treatment and um, all, nearly five years uh, to begin the prescribed burn under uh, NEPA. And just my last final question here in my last few seconds, uh, Ms. Reams, um, the the Biden's regime um, CEQ's phase two regulations 
uh, add burdens to an already overburdened NEPA process. It, can you expand um, briefly while my time's expiring <laughs> upon what reforms um, should um, CEQ should implement to better align with the law um, and the congressional intent? Well, the intent also was, it was supposed to be simplifying, then we had a 430-page document to simplify. So I think one of the pieces that's important on this document, this piece is that it does not reduce community engagement. It continues community engagement, which we, we all agree we need. So I think there's just some mischaracterization about what this does. Um, would be my quickest answer. Yes, I think only Congress and bureaucrats could simplify in 435 pages. Thank you all so much for your time, and uh, I apologize for going over. I yield back.